Okay, so welcome to the Multiple Tangos uh, midterm sound design session tutorial. So just going to do a quick run through as to how this should be going for you guys and to help you basically figure out how you're supposed to complete this assignment. Okay, number one, you should have the folder of, um, of items, of audio files on your computer already. How do you get them? Well, it is actually on the assignment page. Let's go to the assignment page. So let's go ahead and scroll down. Okay, so let's see here. Midterm sound design session. It's in module eight, uh, week eight, April 2nd. It's also in the previous week's module as well. Uh, module six, module seven, module eight, otherwise known as week six, week seven, week eight. Look for the link that says midterm sound design session. Click on that. And all the instructions are here. Here it will say <clears throat> you need to uh, download the video below to your computer right here. So you can right click on the MP4 link, oops, and save link as. Or I may, as a, as a backup option, you could just skip to, um, you will need sound to um, step number five under instructions. Go to my sound effects library and locate the multiple tangos SFX folder. If you click on this, it should take you to a, um, a Google Drive page. And at the top is a folder called multiple tangos SFX. What you should do is right click on it and download it. Right click on it and download it. You want to download it to your computer because once you do that, here it is on my computer, you will see two folders within it. One that says video files and one that says clips and effects for multiple tangos. So once again, you can download the video from the assignment page, but it's probably easier just to download the multiple tangos sound effects folder from my Google Drive links to my sound effects library, as it says in step five. So once you do that, you will have two folders. You'll have your multiple tangos sound effects folder and within it, two other folders, one that says video files and one that says clips and effects for multiple tangos. So the video you need, uh, there's this, these are actually the same videos, just two different formats. Um, Pro Tools likes MP4s and MXFs. It also likes dot .moves, um, but what I've found is Pro Tools likes MXF files the best. And by that, I mean Pro Tools tends to run the smoothest. It doesn't run into as many errors. It doesn't lag. It doesn't stutter um, if you use an MXF file. MP4s are generally okay as well, but if you're gonna run into any sort of performance issues, it's gonna be with the MP4. Either one will work. Um, in this example, I'm just gonna use the MP4, but um, if for some reason that is giving you trouble, you've got the MXF as a backup. And again, these are the same files, it's just two different formats, and you should use the one that seems to work with your computer the best. And then all of the clips that you would possibly need for this um, are in this clips and effects for multiple tangos folder. So uh, remember the assignment is to just place the appropriate sounds at the appropriate points in the session. You do not have to mix the audio levels unless you want to. Now, uh, if you do exercise 10, you're going to learn this thing called automation. Um, you do not have to do any automation for this midterm project. You only have to do it for exercise 10. For this midterm sound design session, you do not need to do any automation. If you want to though, feel free. Um, uh, because by now, uh, you will have played with automation a little bit. Um, but this project is all about setting up your Pro Tools session correctly, importing files, and placing those files as audio clips in your session at the right places. 
That's all I'm grading you on. So place the appropriate sounds at the appropriate points. Do not mix the audio levels unless you want to. I'm only grading on the above mentioned areas. And then once you feel there are enough effects to work with, export your session as a stereo bounce. That's something else we learn in exercise 10, but you do have to do for this um, midterm. I do want you to export this as a stereo bounce. <clears throat> I just want you to export um, your session as a stereo wave file. Um, you can export the video with it, but all I'm really looking for is the audio. And to submit for the grade, um, complete these steps and export and upload your audio mix through the Canvas assignment page below. So on your assignment page, there will be something that says submit assignment. Click on that and then a window and then another window will pop up that will give you the choice to upload something from your computer, which will be the files that you um, downloaded, or I mean, um, that you created in this project. Now, <clears throat> if for some reason Canvas isn't working for you for submitting the assignment, you can always email this to me as well. That's just as good. And I also want you to upload your Pro Tools session file because I'm grading you on two things. I'm grading you on, Let's see if I say it right here. I'm graded on your session organization, your sound effects choices and placement within the session, and the video import and placement within the session, and the correct export or bounce of your audio file. So that's why I need you to export your audio bounce and uh, submit that for your grade. And I also need you to submit your Pro Tools session file, which is the .ptx file uh, in your Pro Tools session folder. I'm going to show you that in just a second. That is how I can see how your session was organized. So what you want to do is this. First, open up Pro Tools. Well, first, download all these, download this folder. Then, as you can see, I did that here. There it is, multiple tango sound effects, double click on it, and here's everything we need. Then open up Pro Tools, create a new session. I'm going to call it, and what I would suggest, just follow my lead here, call it multiple tangos midterm, and then your name. So I'm just gonna put Ken on mine. Uh, remember all of these uh, factors right here. We want wave files. We want 24-bit bit depth. We want 48 kilohertz uh, sample rate on your computer that might already be uh, selected for you. It might be grayed out, but it's okay. Don't worry about it if it is. And input output settings. <clears throat> remember, this class is all about stereo. We, we are working with stereo and we export in stereo. So we want a stereo mix. And remember, we want to do interleaved. By now, you should know what this means. If not, go back to your notes to, re to remember. Prompt for location. This is where Pro Tools is going to ask us, where do we want to save our session folder? So we click on Create. I am going to, on this case, I ha in this case, I have an external hard drive. So I'll just it's going to create a folder that says multiple tangos midterm dash Ken um, on my external hard drive. So I'm just going to hit save. Boom. So now if we go to my external hard drive folder, check it out. Here is a, my new session folder called multiple tangos midterm dash Ken. That was in the dashboard that I just showed you. And in there, there we go, it is a folder called audio files. So remember the audio files folder will contain all of the audio files that we import into this project. You put something in your clip bin over here, boom, it's gonna show up in your audio files folder. Um, when you bounce something at the end, it will go into your bounced files folder. So if you, at the end, when you do your stereo export or stereo bounce, as they call it in Pro Tools, and you're trying to find it, look in your bounced files folder in your session folder. Clip groups, it's something we're gonna learn about later in the semester. 
this is your Pro Tools session file. This is your PTX folder. I mean, this is your PTX file right here. So at the end, after you uh, bounce your um, stereo export of your mix, you want to grab it from your bounce files folder, submit that, and then after you've saved everything, I want you to also submit this .ptx file. This is a session file that will let allow me to open it up and it basically see a snapshot of what your Pro Tools session looks like so I can see how it was organized. If I have those two things, I can give you a grade. Your bounced stereo file and your PTX file. Okay. And also, you'll have a video files folder. You don't need to submit that to me, but for organizational purposes, you want to put the video file that you use into your video files folder. So let's do that right now. Um, here is my multiple tangos. Oops, sorry. There it is. Multiple tangos sound effects folder that I downloaded from the link in the assignment. I'm going to take the MP4 file as the one I want to use and I'll put it into the video files folder. Boom. Okay. Now that that's in there, I can go into my session. So what's the first thing I want to do? Well, I'm doing a sound design session for a video. <clears throat> so why don't we import the video file import? Oops, file import video. Now, where do you think the video is? It's in the multiple tangles, multiple tangles midterm dash can folder. Well, in this case, that's what I named it. And remember, I just moved the video file that I want to use into the video files folder. There it is. So now this window pops up. Since there are no tracks in here, I am going to go ahead and put it on a new track. Um, where I want it to be, I want it to be at the session start. I don't want it to start in the middle of the session. I want it to start psh, at zero, 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 zero at the very beginning. So session start is what we want. And I'll, there's probably audio in the file that I will want to use, at least have something I can reference when I'm dropping in clips. So yes, I want to import audio from the file. So I hit OK. Now, what do you think is going to happen here? It's importing audio from the file. It's importing audio into the project. Remember what that means? Every clip of audio that's imported into the project goes into the audio files folder. So it's letting me know that it is going to drop something in the audio files folder because I have, yes, requested to import audio from the video file. So I say open. It's processing it. Boom. There it is. So now this is what we've got. We've got the multiple tangos video track right here. And then we've got the multiple tangos audio track that that is that is embedded in the video file. So apparently this video actually does have some audio in it. When you're doing sound design and you bring in video, there usually will be audio attached to that video. It's usually audio that's what we call reference audio or production audio, um, which basically means audio that the video editor used because they need something to edit to, right? They've got the video, they need some sort of sound to edit with. So they're just using basically like a rough mix. Um, your job as a sound editor is to replace that sound with the good recording. They are probably using the camera audio. You, the sound editor, have a folder full of files of the lav mics, of the shotgun mics, and it's up to you to basically make everything sound as good as possible, including the dialogue that may already be in there because it looks like there is some dialogue that's in there, but it's like I said, it's most likely production audio that's used, that's probably pretty poor and needs to be replaced with the good stuff. So um, let's look here. This is our video track. So I would name I would just double click on the nameplate and rename it. <clears throat> um, this is just what I would do. Tango's vid. 
This is the production audio. So this would be Tango's Prod Odd. Okay. So this is something that we've learned about in the resources, and that is correct track order. You will be graded on this. So let's go up to track new. Let's create a new audio track that is dialogue. And remember, dialogue, <clears throat> the abbreviation for that is DX. So, and all dialogue tracks are usually mono. So we want to say mono, audio track, DX. Then um, we want to create another new track, another, another dialogue track, but one for ADR. So new mono audio track ADR. So what we're doing out here is we're setting up our standard order of tracks for a sound design session. Dialogue always comes first. Then, well, actually, the video is usually at the top. And then it's dialogue and ADR. Anything that's dialogue related. Production audio. I'm sorry, production dialogue. Um, a dialogue track. If there's a dialogue track for a man, if there's a dialogue track for a woman, if there's a dialogue track for each individual character, you need a track for person one, a track for person two, a track for person three, boom, 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 boom. I know for a fact there are two different people in this video, so I would probably want to have two dialogue tracks, one for the man and one for the woman. So I will, right now I've made one. So I'll call this a DX man, and I'm gonna create another Dialogue track, mono, of course, DX woman. <clears throat> so that DX man, DX woman, and I'm, I'm guessing I'll probably have to do some ADR. So I already created an ADR track, also mono. So I've got my dialogue tracks now ready to go. Next in line after dialogue are our effects tracks. Now, if you remember that really cool semicircle that I brought up before, let me pull up right now. There we go. The circle of talent. So this is sort of our basis for our Pro Tools session track order. So first, everything that's dialogue or voice related. Our production recording, which is this right here, the production recording that was attached to the video. Dialogue, so we've got, I know there's a man and a woman in this clip, so we're gonna have dialogue man, dialogue woman, and then ADR, we're probably gonna have to do some ADR, so I've created a blank ADR track. Next is the sound effects category. We are going to have ambiance, uh, which, in, which we um, usually call background. That has to do with like just sound of the air, city sounds, factory sounds. Um, those are all tracks of audio that underlay like entire scenes to basically give a vibe of where the person is at. We call that ambiance or background. So what we do here is create a new track. Let's make it stereo because most sound effects are, some are mono, some are stereo, preferably stereo. So let's make it stereo and we'll call this background, BG. Boom. Okay, now let's go back to that thing. Okay, so now we have sound effects and Foley. So I have no idea how many like sound effects tracks I'm gonna need, but there's definitely gonna be like punches, there's definitely gonna be gunshots, there's gonna be helicopter sounds, there's gonna be motorcycle sounds. All of these are sound effects. So what we'll do is we will create new stereo um, tracks and I'll call this FX1, I'll create another one that says, it's also stereo, FX2, and then if we wanted to do a shortcut, we could just right click on this track, click on duplicate. And what we can do is we could just say, um, I'll just create two more. 
and then I'll just rename them FX3. And since I duplicated it, they're stereo. <laughs> so I don't have to go through that whole menu again. Okay, so what else is what, what else is missing? Foley. So we're gonna go more into this in the second part of the semester, but sound effects are like sound effects that generally are not human created, and Foley are effects that are human created. Things like footsteps, clothing sounds, like when I'm buttoning up a shirt, that makes a sound like snap, snap, snap. Um, brushing my hair. I don't know if you can hear that. Snapping my fingers, clapping. Or in this case, there, there's a scene where this guy has a switchblade. He's switching a switchblade around. That is a Foley effect. It's um, If you ever look in a Foley studio, it's they're creating sounds that they're watching on the screen. So if someone's walking, they're recording their footsteps. If someone's putting on their clothes, they're recording the sound of clothes being put on a body. Um, if they're handling something, you know, if they've got... A, a drinking glass and maybe they're like fingernails tapping the drinking glass they're doing that if they're drinking water gulping really loudly they're recording that all that is foley because they're human-based sound effects the fx and foley kind of bleed together category wise so it's okay if they get mixed up a little bit but you still want to designate them as best you can in pro tools so what you do is you want to create Foley tracks. So let's make a new stereo Foley track. And the abbreviation for Foley is FO, FO1. And then FO2. And we'll just create two right now. And then what is the last on the list? Music. Music doesn't have any subcategories. It's just music. And the abbreviation for music is MX. So, new track. Music is always stereo. So we'll call this MX. And this right here is the, is the standard order that you should do for all sound design sessions. Video at the top. And then production dialogue, which is the dialogue, usually the dialogue track that is connected with the video, which is usually like the rough audio that the um, that the picture editor is working with. Just so you, the sound editor, have an idea of what they want it to sound like. And like, okay, this is okay, I'll clean this up, that sort of a thing. And then under that, we've got dialogue, all the different dialogue tracks. Maybe dialogue man, lavalier, dialogue woman, boom, things like that. ADR tracks, background or ambiance tracks, FX tracks, things like gunshots, car sounds, motorcycle sounds, that sirens, that sort of a thing. Then we've got Foley, things human-based sound effects, things like footsteps, clothing, um, gulping, swallowing, chewing, that sort of a thing. And then music. So it all follows this this um, three-part circle of talent dialogue voice sound effects music in that order dialogue background effects foley and then music and they're all have their own abbreviations that you have to adhere to dx for dialogue adr of course background or bg fx for sound effects fo fo for foley and mx for music this is how you should set up all your sound design sessions from the beginning. So when you do your final uh, assignment in this class, it's you're gonna set it up the same way. As it goes on, you're gonna be like, oh man, there's like a third person in here. I didn't expect that. What do I do? There's a third person talking. I need to make another dialogue track. Well, here's the cool thing about Pro Tools. If while I'm editing this, I'm like, I discover there's a third person, I'll be like, oh, I can't believe it. There's like a there's like a villain. I need and there's like a I'm sorry, there's like a villain. I need to add a dialogue track for that villain. Well, Pro Tools has this thing. When you click on a nameplate, I'm just left clicked once on this nameplate. See how it's highlighted? When it's highlighted and you go up to track new, you can just create a new track. Let's call this DX villain. And look what happens. It creates the track after what I highlighted. So if you say, oh, I need a new FX track, you could just go to the last FX track, 
and just highlight it. And then when you go up to create a new track, it will create that track underneath the track that you highlighted. So otherwise, what it'll do is it'll always just put the tracks at the bottom and then you'll just have to like drag them up wherever you want them to go, which is fine, but it's quicker to just say, you know what, let's highlight this and then create a new track and then boom, it just pops it in after that one. So I'm gonna delete these because I don't need them actually. Okay, so we're all set up. And so now what I would do is this. Here is the multiple tangos folder, clips and effects. So what, what I like to do is I like to go into the workspace browser window, new workspace default. Because the workspace browser, as long as you could find the folder that has all the files you want to play with, you can actually audition the clips that you want. So, for example, um, I know there's a heli I know there's a helicopter in here, and here's one that says helicopter. Let's hear what that sounds like. Oh, sorry about the feedback there. Got a weird mic system. It's a new house, new mic system. Let's see who else we, so okay, we want that. So I'll just drag and drop that into my clip bin over here. And then we have motorcycle. Double click on that waveform, see what that sounds like. Great. Drag and drop that. There's a fight scene. Um, there's some punches. Looks like it's different samples of punches. Good, because I don't want every punch to sound the same. I want to like mix and match them. So I'll just drag this whole audio file into there and just go ahead and audition them. And because you know, you're not going to need all of these, you're going to need most of them, but you don't need all of them. Uh, maybe you will need all of them. It's up to you, but you can at least listen to them before you drop them in. Because I could just go here select all and just drop them in. I could do that. That's, that'll work just as well. That's fine. It's just a little less organized that way because I might not need all of them. So why bring something in that you're not going to use and just clutter it? So let's just use, um, in this case, the uh, workspace browser. Okay, I brought in those few little guys right there. And so now what you do is use some of the tools you've learned so far to scroll through this thing. Remember, this is your smart tool. This is your trim. This is your selector. This is your grabber. So let's just, let's get out of the smart tool just for a second. Let's go with the selector. With the selector, you can click around the video to find things that you want. Now what's cool is this time code right here matches the time code up here. So what I would like to do is let's go to let's go do a punch. Looks like he well, he kicked somebody right there. Where does he punch somebody? Man, this guy's crazy. Ooh, okay, let's find a punch. There we go. 4822. 4822. Someone's getting punched in the face. So we go into spot mode, we go over to the clip window, punches right there, and we just, and what, what is a punch? A punch is an effect. It's not, actually in this case, uh, a punch, because it's a human-based sound effect, this would be a Foley effect. So I'll go down into Foley take the punch and drop it into the into the foley track now what you're seeing here <clears throat> is i'm dragging it in here and nothing is happening why is this well what what do we see here on this audio clip it says stereo what do we see here this says stereo what do we see here it doesn't say stereo. That means it's mono. One thing about Pro Tools is that it doesn't like, um, it won't let you drag a mono file into a stereo track. 
and it won't let you drag a stereo file into a mono track. So this is the thing. Dialogue is always mono. Music is always stereo. But effects can be mono or stereo. It depends on who's recording them and how they've exported them and what, what they've given you. So in this case, we have a mono file, a, a mono Foley file of a punch. And I have a stereo Foley track. So what I need to do is create a mono Foley track. So I'll go to this nameplate, track new, mono, and I'll call this Foley punches. There we go. So now, if I'll, I still have this old stereo Foley track, so if there is some stereo Foley I'm going to throw in there, I've got it. But maybe it'll stay blank for this whole session. Who knows? But it's there if I need it. But now I have a mono one. So now let's bring this in. Just drag it anywhere. And where was that punch? Do you remember? It was at 01. Oop. It was at 01. Uh, let's see here. Where was it? It was at 01 zero, zero, 48. 22. Let me make this a little smaller so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. So it dropped the punches at that moment. So now let's see how that sounds. Okay. It's close. So what I would do, remember we learned about the nudge tool? First, I will zoom in on this little clip. What I like to do is I like to highlight the clip. Oops. First, go back into slip mode. Because when you're in spot mode, it always thinks you want to move stuff around to certain time codes. Highlight the clip just by just by clicking on it with your grabber. And then zoom in. Remember, th these are your sort of quick zoom tools right here. And each this is their waveform. So what I would do is I would use my trim tool and trim out the punches I don't need. So I'm just going to use this first punch right there. And I think it comes in about half a second too late. So I am going to go up to the nudge. Make it make sure it's on set on time code. One frame. And remember, what are the shortcut keys? Comma and period or plus and minus on the numeric keyboard. So let's zoom in. And now I'm going to nudge it. There we go. Let's let's try that. There we go. Looks like there's a couple punches in there. It's like a one-two punch. So one thing you can do, Pro Tools has copy and paste features just like most other programs. You can highlight it, use your selector tool, and just pop it in right there, anywhere you want, and paste it. Oops. Oh, come on. Copy it. I just didn't copy it. Paste it. There you go. Use your trim tool. All right? And then use your grabber. And what's cool about Pro Tools is when you move stuff around, what you're seeing in the video window, you're, this first frame of audio right here, you're seeing that like what it would line up with in the video. So if this is my punch, and I want to make sure that my punch actually starts right when the first one-two punch happens, I can drag this until... It's the first frame of the fist hitting the face. Boom, right there. See that? So this first frame of audio right here matches what's going on here. So then, and I've already placed this one, the second one, using the nudge tool. So now, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Pretty cool, huh? Boom, boom. So... We've got those two punches lined up, all good to go. Let's go into the next one. What, what happens after this? 
Ooh, we get stabbed. Is there a stabbing sound? I think there is. Let's go back into the workspace browser. Let's see. Stab right there. Great. So this would be a stabbing sound. Um, this stab, as we could see, is not a stereo file. So let us create another Foley because st stab is a sound you make with, that's a human makes with, with their hand. Um, I would create a new track. I'm going to show you how to do that. You don't, you highlight the nameplate that you want to create the track under, and you could just right click on it and click on new. So you don't have to go up to track. You could just right click on the nameplate, click on new, mono, and we'll call this Foley Stab. And there it is. And so where does he get stabbed? Let's see here. Ooh, at 51 seconds. So let's go into spot mode. Drag the stab down to the Foley stab track. Just drop it anywhere because now it's going to say, what's the time code? Well, 51 seconds on the nose. There it is. So let's see how that sounds. Ooh. This Ooh. This Ooh. This is okay. Looks like I'll probably have to nudge that just by a few frames to get it perfectly set up. But you get the idea. So it's all about placing the appropriate clips in the appropriate tracks. Um, we're not going to worry about mixing yet. We're just going to just do as much as you can. Um, and you know, there's a whole bit at the beginning too that will actually be a little bit easier. There's a whole there's a whole motorcycle bit. You don't need to mix it. I just want to see that you place the motorcycle in sound effect in the motorcycle sound effect track. I want to see um, when it gets to the airport, there's going to be a helicopter. I want to see that you've placed a helicopter clip in the helicopter um, uh, track. And uh, what else? There's like a little typing effect here that happens. Yes, right there. That is a sound effect. Um, that is in the sound effect folder. I want to make sure that you that typing effect is in its own sound effect. You're going to the right place. I can't hold it here long. Let's go on and on and on and on and on. These these sounds of our voices are not the best. Don't worry about cleaning those up. Just leave them how they are, because um, we're going to get an ADR in the second half of the class. This is all about just placing sound effects, foley, and music in 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 the uh, in the session. And then when you're done with placing all that stuff, here's what you do. Now it's time to do the bounce, otherwise known as the export. So let's go to chapter 10 of the book and see what they say about that. This is what we need to see right here. The bounce will only include audible tracks. That means if anything is soloed or muted, it's going to export those tracks and not export the muted tracks. So, I don't know, say at the end of this you've got 10 tracks and five of them you have, you have muted. That means that those tracks are no longer audible, which means they will not export. So if you've done that for some reason, but you didn't want to do that, you want to make sure to unmute those tracks. So remember that the bounce will include only audible tracks. The bounce will be placed on the selected output path. At this point, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to talk about inputs and outputs in the second half of the semester. Right now, um, if you haven't messed with your IOs, um, you'll be fine. Um, the bounce will be a printed version of your session. So if you have added effects to your inserts and if you've done anything with your sends, um, that will be included. Um, this, I'm not, this, um, assignment does not include any effects, so you don't have to worry about that. But this is very important. The bounce will be based on the timeline selection. So if you have an active selection, Pro Tools will bounce the length of the selection only. If no selection is present, the bounce command will create a bounce from the start of the session to the end of the longest track. That's important, the end of the longest track. So let me show you what I mean. 
So here is our session. We are mixing it to this video. If I highlight this, this is this track is selected. And when I say, okay, let's bounce this, it's going to assume that because I highlighted this, I want to bounce it from the beginning of this highlighted clip to the end of this highlighted clip. So anything that's on this session's timeline that goes from here to here will be exported and bounced. If I just clicked on this and select and bounced it, Pro Tools will think, oh, they just want to bounce this selection. So if you guys export a bounce and you just have a clip highlighted, just a little sound effect clip highlighted, all it's going to get bounced is that sound effect clip. So whatever is highlighted in the session is what gets bounced. So you always want to make sure that uh, A, you either don't have anything highlighted, and that way it will bounce from the very beginning of the session to the end of whatever the longest track is. So this is the longest track. Um, if I had placed, say, something here, it will um, go from the beginning of the session all the way to the end of this clip because this is the last clip in the session. If I play something here, it will go from the beginning of the session all the way to the end of this clip because this clip is the last clip in the session. But if I have those things in the session, but I have this highlighted, then as it says in chapter 10, Pro Tools will bounce the length of the selection only. So uh, it will bounce from here to here because I have highlighted this length of the timeline. It'll, it'll stop before it hits this. If I have nothing highlighted, it will go from here all the way to the end of whatever the last clip is, which would be these guys. So what I, the best thing to do in this case, and this has happened lots of times before, people exported bounces to me of a one minute movie, and it's been like 10 minutes long because they've just thrown a bunch of things on their timeline that are way at the end. And when they exported the bounce, it bounced the entire timeline. I want you to only bounce what you were working on. You were working on this 90 second movie, so I don't want a bounce that's longer than this movie so to and the easy way to do that is to just highlight the movie and it will only bounce your session from this point to this point then after you've highlighted that you want to go up to file down to bounce mix bounce quick time is the same thing but the only difference is bounce quick time is Include the video and audio as a QuickTime video file that has your mixed audio. Bounce Mix is just audio. So Bounce QuickTime is your mix with the video. Bounce Mix, it doesn't export the video, just your mixed audio. Um, I'm not asking for the video for this project. Um, so you would just click on Bounce Mix. Okay, so it's gonna say, what do you want this to be called? Let's just call this um, multiple tangos midterm can bounce. That's what I would do if I were you. Just keep your session name and just add bounce at the end. File type, remember, there's all these different file types. We only want wave, 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 wave. MP3 is an inferior format and nobody wants that. <laughs> if they do, you'll get fired right away because MP3, while it sounds good in your headphones, um, is not considered to be professional mixing quality. You want to work in wave and bounce in wave and never deviate from that. Always stay in wave. Now, if you were exporting video with this, if you were exporting as a quick time bounce, then you would choose move or MXF because those are video files and it would embed the wave into your move file. But we're not doing that. We're gonna do that at the end of the semester, but we're not doing that now. We're just doing an audio bounce. So choose wave. 
mix source. Right now, um, this will default to whatever your output is. Your output is whatever your speaker system is, whether it's your headphone jack or uh, the output on your computer. Um, my computer has a built-in output that's basically my headphone jack. That's where the audio is coming out of. That is how I'm able to hear the mix when I'm mixing it. So it's saying the mix source, uh, whatever I'm hearing out of the built-in output is what is going to be exported. So I'm saying yes to that. This will usually default to what you want it to be. So you usually don't have to touch this. I want this to be interleaved. I don't want I don't want two files at the end. I don't want a mono left and a mono right file. I want one stereo file, which in Pro Tools world means interleaved. Remember this, this is at the beginning, 24 bit bit depth, 48 kilohertz sample rate. We don't want that to change. You only want to change that if the client says, yeah, can you send that to me as a 44 one 16 bit or whatever. But if they don't ask for any changes, keep it the way it was when you started. And we started at 24 bit 48. Uh, we're keeping it that way. Pad to frame boundary. Um, again, this will be something we deal with later in the semester. Um, import after bounce. You only want to check that if you're going to continue the session and you want to import the mix that you just bounced. Um, I keep this unchecked for now because for this assignment, when you're bouncing this, you will be done with the session unless you want to go back and correct something. Um, so go ahead and leave that unchecked. And now it says file destination. Remember what I said before, bounced files? By default, it will export this to your bounced files folder. And then we're gonna get into this a little later, but there's offline and then there's online. Offline, what that means is it just exports it really fast. Doesn't degrade the quality, it just exports it quickly. If you uncheck it, it will export it in real time. So a 90 second movie, will take 90 seconds to export and you will hear it as it's exporting. This is actually sort of a, a Pro Tools thing um, that uh, this is the way it was done actually up until just a few years ago. And they did this for mixers, um, sort of protection if you will. You might be editing like, I don't know, say a 10 minute short and you'll be doing it for hours and you're just gonna get all burnt out. And at the end you're like, I'm done, bounce that thing. And then when it bounces, you hear it, it exports it in real time. So if it's a 10 minute movie, it takes 10 minutes to export it. But it does that because it's playing it for you. Because then after you've been mixing it all day, you can he listen to it as it's exporting. And then maybe three minutes into it, you hear a mistake. That way you can just stop it and then fix it and then redo the bounce. It's basically a way to sort of save your butt um, from like just exporting something really quick and sending it off to somebody without checking your work. Um, so offline makes it so um, it exports the file like instantly, but then you have to manually check your work afterwards. Online, it exports it in real time and plays it as it exports in real time, thereby letting you check your work as it's happening. Um, so let's do an offline one first. There it is. Okay, now let's go to our session folder. The session folder you created at the beginning of this whole thing. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. There it is, multiple tangos midterm can. Look at this, bounced files. There it is. Let's play it. This is X-ray control. You have initiated the extraction. Go! <laughs> Remember, I just put in a couple of sound effects and Foley effects. <laughs> There's really not much going on. Um, so what's the difference between that and an online bounce? I'll show you. Bounce mix. We'll keep everything the same, except we'll call this online. We'll keep everything the same, but we will uncheck the offline, making it online, and watch what happens. Bounce. See this right here? 
remember this is about this is about a minute 25 movie so it's playing it back in real time letting me listen to it um i don't have any sound effects at the beginning so it's silent right now but if there was a motorcycle in there we would be hearing it if there's a helicopter in there we would be hearing it and if something sounded a little bit off i could always cancel it by hitting the escape key then correct it and then bouncing it again so the offline online method it basically gives you the choice of whether you want to listen to it as it's exporting or just do the super quick fast export that we're all used to once it's all done what you want to do is you want to go back to your assignment page and submit it to me so let's go into student view so i would say let's see start assignment click on that and then here where it says upload file click on upload file choose file and then find the two files remember like i said there's two files i want i want your bounced file and then i want your pro tool session file so these two files right here doom your bounced wave file and your and your pro tool session file add another file your pro tool session file there you go and then click on submit assignment you could do this through email as well but um, i would try submitting it through the assignment first and then once it's done you're good to go and then i'll grade it um so that in a nutshell is how this assignment works so since we are not meeting during spring break hopefully this will help you uh sort of figure out what to do um for the midterm sound design session assignment all right good luck and i'll see you on the 16th